Hi guys, Alana here. Welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm here with my co-host Jamie and we are excited to be talking about showing up to pray and some of the lies that might keep us from showing up to pray. So we hope that this is going to be an encouraging discussion and quite practical in your own prayer life. So let's start with a word of prayer. God, we just thank you that you make prayer available to us, God, that you've chosen to involve us in bringing your kingdom will to pass here on earth as it is in heaven. God, we just pray that you would help us today to recognize lies in our own lives that keep us from showing up to pray, that keep us from taking advantage of this amazing gift that you have given us. And we just ask that your blessing would be on this time and this discussion. In Jesus' name, amen. Our verse of the day is from Psalm 34, verses 4 through 7 from the NIV. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. So I guess we're talking about showing up to pray. And when I picked this verse, I just, this first part where it says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. I just think we just need to go to God, um, you know, and, and we should never feel let shame or fear or hesitation keep us or procrastination, keep us from meeting with God because, you know, the, this poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all of his troubles. God wants to hear from us. He wants you to spend time with him. He wants to hear from you. So I thought that'd be a good intro. That is a good one. Do you know the group Shane and Shane? What is it? Shane and Shane? Yeah. They're both named Shane. Yeah. I've heard of them, but I don't, it's a music group. Yeah, yeah, they're a Christian, like a yeah, Christian group with yeah, uh, like I've good heard harmonies and stuff. They, they have this whole album where all the lyrics are basically taken right from Psalms, and they have one um, based on this passage. So I love that. that. We're sure going to be in my head the rest of the day, which isn't at all a bad one to have. So no. thank you. <laughs> good. Or just for fun, since we're talking about showing up to pray, is have you ever shown up somewhere when it was evident you were not expected? Yes, it was very awkward. So um, we hadn't been living here in Alaska for very long. And my husband had met someone at work. They had become friends. And I don't know if they had done anything outside of work together or not, but they invited us over. Mm -hmm. They invited our family over to their house for dinner. And so, you know, it, and, and it's at that time, I want to, it must not have been right after we moved because I think there were three of us. I, maybe not. It doesn't matter. Okay. So at least two young kids, if not three. So we mm -hmm. come traipsing in and, you know, we get inside, introduce ourselves to his wife and say hi. And I don't know it. it and I thought for a second that she looked a little surprised, but oh, you no. know, it didn't even really register with me. So later on, after we kind of got to know them and we're laughing and talking and stuff, she's like, you know, I didn't actually know that you guys are coming over for dinner until like 10 minutes before you got here. Or I don't remember what the timing oh, was, but yikes. yeah, we were not expected. And then not just like a couple coming over for dinner, but this whole oh, yeah. family with these kids in tow had to be overwhelming, but they're very good friends now. And I can say that, you know, it didn't scare them off and, you know, but it was, it was pretty awkward at the time. Uh -huh. too. That's funny. I was um, in high school and I had a friend with a Halloween birthday and my dad was going to drop me off at her house for her party. And I was certain that I knew which house it was. So I'd been there a couple times, but it turns out like I got to the front door. It wasn't a costume party or anything. So I'm just, you know, there in my normal high school clothes. I've got a um, birthday present in my hand. I ring the doorbell and it's just this like random stranger with a bowl of, you know, trick or treating candy. <laughs> and so, you know, immediately I realized, okay, this isn't the right house. And then I had this split second of being like, well, I could just say trick or treat and pretend like I meant to be here. <laughs> like, I'm not in a costume. I'm not with a group. I'm probably like 14 or 15 years old. I've got a birthday present in my hand. A <laughs> present for your trouble. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, of course, when you're a teenager, like everything is mortifying. You oh, know what I, I mean? Know. Like, oh, yeah. Really? It's 
okay, sorry, wrong house. But of course, when you're that age, it's like, oh, I can't believe I did this. I'm so embarrassed. Yes. Did you <laughs> find the right house? Yeah, we found the right house and I had it. I'm sure I had a fun night. I remember nothing about the party. I just remember being so embarrassed showing oh up to the wrong one. But yeah, just that, like that very first, oh, I could say trick or treat and save this whole thing, like save face. I'm like, no, oh, that's stupid. <laughs> Better to be embarrassed in front of a stranger than people you know. That's my motto. Yeah, I think you're probably right. So yeah. speaking of being embarrassed in front of strangers, the other day, like, I actually walked into a glass wall. <laughs> I totally did. <laughs> I've done that before. I have. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that was a fun one. All right. <laughs> so lies that keep us from showing up to pray. First, like, what do we mean by showing up to pray? Maybe we should start there. I don't know. I guess just... um just do it. Just you know? do it. Yeah. Just do it. Like the Nike. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if we're going to get like copyright infringement lawsuits now or trademark. Oh trademark. no, that's right. I'm going to edit that out later. <laughs> Are you seriously? No. Okay. <laughs> um, actually we said just dude it. It's just a, dude it. Yes. yes. We did not say that copyright. We should and make t-shirts like that. Just say just pray. That would be fun. Yeah. That's a good idea. I'm going to cut that out too. So nobody else takes so nobody our idea. Steals our idea. Yeah. That, yeah. Right. Let's, let's do it. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, okay. I, I think we're on the same page. Showing just, up to pray means just pray. Do it. Just, yeah. Just, just pray. Do get past the hangups. And yeah, and you might not pray perfectly. You might get distracted, but it's still better to, to do it. Yeah. So. And, and with this idea that showing up to pray is a better goal than doing it perfectly or mm -hmm. whatever, but showing up and doing it is better than not. Better yeah. to do it than to not to. Yeah, and better to do it not perfectly than to not do it at all. Yes, absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think one of the lies that keeps us from showing up to pray is this kind of all or nothing mentality. Mm -hmm. Like, I've got to have this huge chunk of absolutely uninterrupted time or it's not even worth praying at all. Mm -hmm. you know, and if you've um, been in our, what's our course, the um, Smash Your Prayer Blocks, the yes. online prayer retreat we've got, mm -hmm. we have a couple sections where it's praying with a timer. And you, it's just amazing. It will blow your mind when you realize, you know what, you can pray super thoroughly in a minute. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, whoa, Alana said I only have to pray a minute a day. No. <laughs> but, you know, we've got this mentality that if it's, if it's not an hour and a half, then it's not worth doing. We're really like one minute of super focused prayer is like, I hate to say it, but I almost feel like it's more than a lot of us pray in like a couple days worth. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe, yes. maybe that's not fair to say, but, um, but at the very least, the fact that you don't have a huge chunk of time is no reason to not pray because you can definitely, um, you know, have, what am I trying to say? My dog just yawned and it really threw me off. I don't know if the mic so cute. Back. She's showing up in your screen. <laughs> I know. She's right there at the bottom. Um, anyway, what am I trying to say, Jamie? Save save my uh, my reputation. <laughs> I got distracted too. Um, Were you watching the dog? <laughs> I know. I was watching her and, you know, when she did her cute little shake thing, I was like, oh. I guess <laughs> um, okay. Focus. Being uh, this is a good segue. Being distracted or not being able to focus <laughs> when you pray is not an excuse. It's better to just jump in, not to feel like you have to do it perfectly mm -hmm. or set aside this huge chunk of time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that not, not feeling like you have to set aside a big set amount of time. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a big set amount of time. It doesn't yeah. have to look perfect or pretty. You know, I almost feel like we've got this idea. Um, okay. I want to pray for 20 minutes, which is a fine goal. Like, I don't think it's bad to set time goals for prayer, but so you sit down or kneel or whatever and you pray. And after two minutes, you realize your mind's wandered. And so then you're like, rats, I need to start the time over again. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. The goal isn't, um, it's almost like, okay, let's say you don't run at all. Like neither you or I do. Like I couldn't run for 20 minutes straight. Could you? No. Like right mean, now? Yeah. Maybe I, if I pretended maybe, to jog, maybe the bear but, was but really was just us. walking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Aside from like being chased by kidnappers or like, you know, trying to retrieve our child from ab an abductor, abductor. That's yeah. a hard word. We could not run for 20 minutes right now. No. Okay. But 
if we ran for a minute and walked for three minutes and ran mm -hmm. for another minute and walked for the rest of the 20 minutes, that's pretty good exercise. Yeah, you can, right? Okay. And you do that for a couple of days. How long? I mean, maybe two weeks before we could do a full 20 minutes. Like oh, if we yeah. were doing this every single day, mm -hmm. right? And like, yeah. So I think prayer is the same way. We just did an episode about, you know, the parallels between prayer and physical exercise. And, and it all comes back to this. Like it doesn't have to be, it doesn't, you don't have to be, you know, the marathon, not marathon sprinter. That doesn't make any sense. I like that. You don't have to be a marathon <laughs> sprinter. Man, because that would be no a <laughs> You don't have to be like um, the best, fastest, and have the most endurance like on day one that you start. It's a discipline that like any other discipline builds on itself. So you start with 20 minutes that you block out for prayer and on day one you're distracted for 19 out of those minutes that could totally happen and i love to think of you know when we're talking about distractions in prayer i love thinking of sit-ups because you would never consider yourself a failure if you did sit-ups and you sat up and then you laid back down and then you sat up and laid back down again you wouldn't say oh i failed at sit-ups because i keep right. laying back down mm -hmm. the point is that you keep getting back up you keep going right. back to it and you know, it's that um, in Proverbs where it says, you know, though the righteous fall seven times, mm -hmm. keep on getting back up or though the righteous fall, they get up seven times, whatever it yep, is. Yep. But, you know, the wicked are crushed by calamity. Don't be crushed by distractions. There's no reason. Like mm -hmm. we have victory. We have permission to let the guilt go and just m right. keep moving forward. Right. And the day that you pray right now isn't going to be the same that you could do a month from now right. with training, just like you and me running, you know. Um, but just that, like running, because I'm sitting here thinking, man, I'm, I'm thinking to myself in two weeks, I'm like, I'm in such good shape. But just thinking, <laughs> thinking about that two weeks of running and walking and running and walking and getting uh -huh. to the point where you can run, thinking about it isn't going to get you there. You have to do right. it. So just thinking about not being distracted and being a better prayer isn't going to happen until you get in the trenches and do that little by little movement forward. Yeah. 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 Well, and I think we have this mentality that some people are just like perfect at praying and perfect at keeping their attention focused on the Lord. And maybe some people are, I haven't met anybody yet who is, I know no, I'm not. I know I'm not one. So I know there's that. So yeah. 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 Um, so I've, I've gotten to where I don't make distraction free praying my goal. You know, the goal really is just to spend that time with God and some days is better than others. Um, you know, we've done quite a few episodes before about just anything that helps you feel better, like, you know, to be in better physical and mental health is going to help your prayer life. Um, I've been, I've been getting better with not checking my email and Facebook on my phone quite as much. And even that I can see makes a difference in my prayer life because we can be so addicted to just constantly like refreshing pages mm -hmm. in hopes of finding something new that it makes it even harder to unplug and connect with God. So any of these small steps that we can do just to become less distracted people can help us be better prayers also, but none of it happens overnight. No. And I think we really do in this day and age, we're training our brains to be distractible because of oh, all yeah. of the quick, I mean, when I try to play a game with my kids, like a video game, mm -hmm. my brain can't really keep up. Like my son likes to play NHL online, mm -hmm. like not online on, you know, whatever yeah, yeah. I, on the line. Um, and I can't, my brain can't even keep up with how fast the players are moving. I mean, I, my hand-eye coordination is not that great. And I think when we develop that really quick response, you know, or like our texts mm -hmm. and automatically the things that I know how to do, I can do really fast. Mm -hmm. It's just training us to be distractible. So oh, um, episode 10 on our podcast, I'm so excited. I've done this twice today where you I've have. actually referenced. That's pretty, I'm, I'm, right in, I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> I'm right in here. I can see our episode number. So I'm like, episode 10 is yeah. how to stay focused when you pray. And that's, that's an episode where we kind of go in more detail. Mm -hmm. about that distractibility, but how the, the bottom line is not to beat yourself up over it because our brains have been trained to be distractible, but mm -hmm. you can train it to be more focused. You really can, but, but yep. have grace with yourself. 
Yeah, for sure. I think that's, yeah, that's today's biggest takeaway. Um, but here's another hang up and that's like, well, I haven't prayed in forever. Mm -hmm. Why would God want to hear from me now? Or I think anything that has guilt keeping us from God, God doesn't want to hear from me because I've done this or that. Oh yeah. Or I, I haven't been faithful in this area of my life. So God doesn't want to hear from me now. I don't want to treat sin flippantly. If you're deliberately sinning, that is absolutely going to hurt your prayer life. And there's no, no way around that. And that is something that you need to confess to the Lord, ideally confess to others, repent of and change. If you want a healthy prayer life, you need to not be engaging in willful sin on a daily, regular basis. I'm not saying we don't sin, but I think there's a difference between, oh yeah, there I go again. And I'm going to do this even though I know it's wrong. Do you get what I'm saying? Right. Say, oh, but you know, there's freedom in Christ. I've known right. that to be like the <laughs> yeah. oh, freedom in Christ, freedom in Christ. What's right. you know, good for one person isn't necessarily good for the yeah. other. <laughs> yes. Of, yeah. Exactly. Morally, morally, so we're on the same page there. Yeah. Um, so not the fact, so let's, let's just ignore that side of things where people can use grace as an excuse to sin. Right. But let's also not make guilt our reason for not coming to the Lord. No, and I really am a firm believer that guilt, no, not conviction, but true okay. just guilt, mm -hmm. I really think guilt is not just a hang up, but I believe that's a total lie from the enemy. And I mean, mm -hmm. I have yeah, that, that, that you're own. not worthy to come to God. He doesn't want to hear you. Yeah. I mean, I think that's that's truly an enemy lie that that serves to drive a wedge between us and God, yes. and it has to be recognized. Yeah. Yeah. Um so how do we how do we overcome that? I think we've pinpointed that it's a problem that you know the sense of false guilt, which I think is yeah important to distinguish mm -hmm. from actual conviction. But if it's this false guilt that's keeping you from God, you know God doesn't want to hear from me. God's upset with me. Mm -hmm. What's our antidote to that? Well, I think first of all, if if the reason that you're wanting to come back to God in prayer is because you have a problem, which this is what I've I've known people before, and I myself have had this feeling of you have this problem and your first inclination is, I want to go to God with this. I need help. He's the only one I can go to, but oh wait, I haven't praised him in a while. I haven't thanked him oh, in a yeah. while. Yeah. Or I haven't gone to him in so long and now I'm mm -hmm. going to burden him with this problem. Right. Well, I think, I think with, with that kind of guilt of just in general, having not gone to him in a while, um, just go to him. I mean, just, just, I, I really do believe that, that, there are two ways you could go about it if you want. And if you feel like this is what you need to do to feel like you're in the right place, start with praise, start with Thanksgiving. Um, just praise God for who he is. Maybe even apologize and say, God, I know I haven't. And this is very similar. It, it's a relationship. And so I think about this with friends. I have friends. I have one friend in particular I'm feeling so guilty about because I want to talk to her. I want to catch up with her. But it's, it's the same thing with God where I think I want a good chunk of time when I can talk with her. Yeah. I can't call her now. I need to carve out time to call. You know what? She probably would rather me call her and just have five minutes and say, hey, I've really meant to talk with you. Let's just catch up a little bit and I'm going to have to go, but we'll get back and play phone tag later. Mm -hmm. um, so when I do actually talk to her, the first thing I'm going to say is, I am so I'm sorry. sorry it took me this <laughs> So sorry. Just right. go to God with that. He knows your heart. I mean, he knows mm -hmm. how long it's been to the millisecond since you've spoken to him. Um, so if you need to go and start with praise and Thanksgiving and all of that, you can. And, and that's a wonderful way to go back to God. Um, but on the other hand, don't be legalistic about it or think you're going right. to butter right. God up. Suspicious. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. sometimes I think we can go to that extreme and I think we can. go into yeah. praise and thanksgiving like, hey, I'm going to I'm going to prime God to answer my prayer by being. Yeah. Really nice he's to a him. he's not manipulatable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, really, really good points. Uh, last, let's just finish with this. Um, this one about just being so busy, you know, like. I don't even have enough time in my day to fulfill my like just normal everyday obligation. Yeah, feeding my children. Yeah. Sleeping yeah. for more than five hours a night. That kind <laughs> right. of right. Yeah. So there's no time to pray. Um, do you have an episode number handy for us? Are you gonna 
Are you going to be able to pull one out again? Because this no. is something else. Okay, that's right. Because we've but, talked about this before too. Yeah. That when you're, um, you know, when you're, it's so glib. I hate to say it because I, I can just picture people who are super busy, like wanting to slap us when we say this. So if you're too busy to pray, then you're too busy not to pray. Then we get. need to get up two hours earlier. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. That's not what we're saying. That's not what we're saying. I'm a fan of my sleep. Well, what comes to my mind immediately, though, is an exercise. I actually just posted this on Instagram recently, the one-minute prayer. It's just one of you, – you talked about this in um, – I don't know if it was a – Probably the smash your prayer blocks. Smash yeah. your prayer blocks. We talk about it. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, one-minute prayer. You can spare a minute and yes. just set your timer for a minute. Pray for something on your heart and, and just jump in. And if you could do that a couple of times a day or even a couple of times a week or once yeah. a day – that's better than no prayer. So absolutely. Anyone can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Some, it's, some people might even find it useful to like set a little reminder on your phone. Like maybe you've got one person that you want right. to remember to pray for every day. So every day at noon, you have a reminder that's going to go off on your phone, you know, pray for such and such. And even if it's just, do you remember, did you call them popcorn prayers? Like was that part of your lingo? That was a big deal in like youth group, oh, and, right. going, youth group and stuff. Like yeah. Really quick, like, please help someone. So like, that's a popcorn prayer because it's, you know, it's so quick. Right. Yeah. So there's, um, there's nothing wrong with popcorn prayers. Now, obviously just like with the diet, you don't want to live off of popcorn. <laughs> right. Um, but there's a place for popcorn, right? So with that, <laughs> with that, I want to go pop some popcorn. <laughs> so should we close? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, how about I will end with our blessing and you can end with our benediction. Sounds like a plan. May your love abound more and more so that God's love may be complete in you. May God himself teach you to love others. May the love of Christ compel you so that you may love others as he has loved you. May the love of God grow in you and pour out through your life. And may others rejoice when they see the love of the Savior pouring out of you. And our benediction is from Second John 3. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son in truth and love. Amen.